that means we're stopping. Well, that was a heck of a time to unmute. Jeez. Guess we'll just stop then. Hang on, we'll see. Yeah, that's the flight director, Stormcrow. Very well then, boosters, go. Oh, okay. GNC. GNC is go. FAO. FAO is go. CDH. CDH is go. Tango. Tango is go. Safety. Safety is go. Flight is go. Tango and AV1 manage pulling, toggle, do only ground. Do only ground pulling, set to true. Tango, let me know when you're ready to load sequences. Good to load. Delphin, please provide. Igniter, seven, zero, three, Victor, three. Yeah, Zebby's cool. Igniter sequence, seven, zero, three, Victor, three, slot zero. Good load. Alpha, eight, seven, eight, eight, seven, Victor, one. Engine Alpha, eight, eight, seven, Victor, one, slot zero. Good load. Yeah, I got you, Hammer. Bravo, eight. Eight seven Victor one. Engine Bravo eight eight seven Victor one slot zero. Good load. Charlie eight eight seven Victor one. Engine Charlie eight eight seven Victor one slot zero. Loading. Good load. Delta eight eight seven Victor one. Engine Delta eight eight seven Victor one slot zero. Successful load. Echo, 887, Victor 1. Engine Echo, 887, Victor 1, slot 0. Successful load. Ether, please provide. Ether sequence, 883, Victor 4, please. Ether sequence, 883, Victor 4, kick in the door, slot 0. Good load. Tango and AV1 manage pulling, set us back into do both ground and guidance pulling mode. AV1 manage pulling, do both ground and guidance I don't pulling. Know, man. Set to that works down the street, I guess. Delphin, confirm GSE igniter system is ready for launch. GSE igniter system ready. Tango, verify vehicle looks ready for launch aside from tank press. Uh, confirmed, locks tank topping. Wonderful view. Yeah, Alaska Alaska's pretty, man. Yeah. Okay, looks like we got a T purge there. Ours. Hello? Sorry, Stone. And as you heard a few moments ago, the, the team completed the go, no-go poll. There was a brief no-go call from Booster, which is our first stage uh, engineer, as we waited for uh, propellant to complete no topping. Um, but we are all set. Uh, we also just got final range green as well. So right Flat now the down. teams are moving through What's the up, final Lucy? steps of the terminal countdown. Again, just over five minutes to go for launch and everything is appears on track. Let's take a look at the mission profile for today's ascent, Carolina. All right, so starting from the bottom at T0, the, the first stage engines will light and we will have liftoff. A few seconds later, the vehicle will, will begin its pitch over maneuver. And at about one minute and 10 seconds, we will reach max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle and uh, the vehicle will continue to move through first stage flight up until three minutes, um, at which point we'll have main engine cutoff, or MECO. And then a few things happen in pretty quick su succession. Um, the fairing will separate, the stages will separate, and then at three minutes and 15 seconds after liftoff, the upper stage engine will ignite, and we will run for about five and a half minutes before second engine cutoff, or SECO. And hey, very awesome. shortly thereafter, we will have yeah, our too, payload seven. deployment for the Spaceflight Astro One mission. All right, so this is this, this like Carolina. And just we're said. just over four minutes away from the beacon. This is the Spaceflight Astro One launch. Uh, this launch was scrubbed yesterday, and it's uh, they're going to try to go today. We're about four minute fifteen out. 
Let's see what happens here. That launch time is 9.22 a.m. Pacific time, 16.22 UTC. And the what three the different customers made by Spaceflight Incorporated oh. on board headed to a sun-synchronous orbit. Inclined 97 and a half degrees, altitude 525 kilometers, low Earth orbit. And everything is on track for launch right now. We're going to be listening in to the countdown as we get closer to T0, and we'll keep you updated as that proceeds. It's Kodiak. Recording telemetry. Kodiak, Alaska. Reminder, control room, if you require RF data once the vehicle leaves the pad, be prepared to switch over your Grafana pages. Grafana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure, Tessa. We'll find something. FSO, flight on countdown. Be prepared to issue option when rocket IIP marker passes option enable gate. Calling no, out. Mitch. Gotta be careful about hearts. Hearts is dangerous. Man, so many broomsticks these days. Jeez. Three, three minutes. Three minutes and counting. Okay, 180 seconds out. Reminder to all that any three-word hold from here on out will be an immediate abort regardless of source. I'll think about it, Tessa. Discovery, go at throttle up. Oh, whoop. Two and a half minutes 50, to go. 40. All on track. Discovery, go at throttle up. How can they have buildings so close to the pad like that? It's just an optical illusion, man. It's about 100 feet away. Two minutes. 120 seconds. Pause. Seven months. Uh. Kodiak, Alaska, Steve. And there's Astra. Well, that's Astra's main main headquarters in Alameda, California. And there you got the California. Astra team watching live from Alameda, California. Looking forward to today's launch just over 90 seconds away. All good, man. 90 seconds. Why Alaska? Ace at this time, start your PSD recordings cheapest. and downrange Rocket ground Discovery. station recordings. Lunchbox! Give this up to Steve. Polar, good. Done. Discovery, go at throttle up. Sixty seconds. 60 seconds, vehicles on internal control. Yeah, hey, that's what I said. Less than 60 seconds ago, the rocket has taken control of the countdown and everything is on track for liftoff. You'll have live telemetry on the bottom right hand 45. of your screen. And you can track the progress towards orbit on the pressure. left. Upper stage tanks at pre-liftoff. First well, stage fuel tank polar pressurizing. It doesn't matter where you launch for a polar orbit. In fact, it's better to launch through the seconds. poles to get into a polar orbit, believe it or not. Discovery. 20. Alright, here we go. 15. 10. Water on. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. All right, let's go. LV-0009, it's on its way to space. Come on. Our next go! is Max Q. Yeah! Just under yeah! Go! Oh! <laughs> Who was that? T plus 25 seconds, looking good. Everything looked good at, on the lift, guys. I'm not sure, Goalie, but it's... Yeah, a lot more. That was you, that wasn't me! 
plus 45, still looking good. You can see the vehicle pitching downrange south from Kodiak, Alaska towards orbit. Yeah! That guy's into it! I love it! And there you got an onboard view of on the first stage looking down towards the engine section engine section. And a beautiful contrail as the vehicle ascends towards space. Manic laughter for sure. Yeah, me too. Us, yeah, me too. Vehicle is now through the area of maximum dynamic pressure or max Q, the point of maximum stress on the vehicle. Everything looking good. We have about 90 seconds remaining in the first stage portion of the flight. Coming up will be main engine cutoff, or MECO, which is the shutdown of the Tell five first work. stage engines prior to stage separation. And you can see the plume from the first stage expanding as the rocket gets higher in the atmosphere uh, with guys, less can we atmospheric the pressure. Please. All right. T plus two minutes into the flight of LV0009. Still got a great tracking shot from the launch site in Kodiak. Space Flight 1 is the name of the payload fault. Good tracking downrange. And in just about 30 seconds, we have a string of milestones on quick succession. We'll have the first stage engines uh, shut down, main engine cut off, and then the fairing separation and stage separation and upper stage ignition steps will happen in very quick succession. Safety can't confirm, option received. Option received. The telemetry indicator's up, but uh, that telemetry's wrong. There's engine cut off. Should see a fairing separation. Okay, fairing separation. that looked good. Pop go. that second stage. Stage, stage separation. separation. We have set. Let it go. And upper stage engine ignition. Yeah! All right! Cheers coming from the Astro team as a significant portion of our flight milestones have been accomplished. Yeah, baby! That was perfect. We have about five minutes of second stage flight before our payloads are deployed. Oh, that just was... Just a great view of the Earth from space oh. on that upper stage camera uh -oh. on your right. Still uh -oh. seeing the first stage camera looking up at the upper stage on the left. So cool camera views. Looks like there might be a little bit of prop slosh right there. Maybe. I don't, I don't know for sure, but see it moving? So sometimes what happens... And I don't, it looks like it's, it looks like it's compensating just fine. The propellants going into the, going into the pickup at the bottom of the tank, whirlpool, and that whirlpool causes a gyros, gyroscopic force on it, and it basically turns it out of the way. Over four minutes into the flight, everything looking good so far. Upper stage is accelerating horizontally towards orbit. No, it's on, orbit. the engine's on, Stiller. Needing to achieve that horizontal velocity to stay in a sun synchronous yeah, orbit again, okay. aiming for an altitude of 525 kilometers today. Hey, Andy, thanks for the raid. Looks How like now we've uh, got that telemetry updating on the bottom right hand of your screen. Over 300 kilometers in altitude right now, and a little under four and a half kilometers per second of velocity. I mean, Novus, it's. It's on the left, around, the launch team here in Alameda watching would. the vehicle closely. Everything looks to be operating nominally. I mean, it, rock guy, it was... T plus five minutes and counting. Here's much of the Astra team in our factory here in Alameda that's gathered around our, uh, our big screen jumbotron. <laughs> so we enjoy the second stage portion of flight. Well, Kept the automated safe power. All of the, a great job at it. the team wow. and all of the families and, and loved ones who have helped to make today's launch possible. T plus five and a half minutes, still looking good. About three more minutes left in the burn of well, today's I flight. Don't, I don't and hate another this gorgeous picture. onboard view of Earth. <laughs> I don't hate that picture. What is that thing?
Is this a camera looking out the side of the second stage? It could be RCS dead band as well. I mean, whatever it, whatever it is, Rocket Guy, minutes. it looks like it's compensating. We've crossed 400 kilometers in altitude. We have about two and a half minutes remaining in no, the second testing, stage yeah. flight. That was the first stage. Got it. Got it. You see that engine bell glowing red hot as it burns. That is expected, of course. There's the track. And a live telemetry view showing the trajectory south from Kodiak, Alaska, again towards that sun synchronous orbit, right down the middle so far. Over six and a half minutes in the flight now, coming up on 450 kilometers good, Sile, in altitude, yeah. over five kilometers per second. The second stage is kind of moving around a little bit, but uh, it seems to be okay. She's, it's still in the nominal track right there. So the red, the red is, I think, the first stage, and then this right here. Seven minutes in the flight, the still looking stage. good. That's the that's the ideal trajectory, right? And then that's where the stage is. It's in the it's in the track. You're fine. You're still on the road, so to speak. Uh, but it is it is it's you're getting a little bit of deviation. That does happen. Wind can do that. As sunrise rose over blow the you off course. Site, not long it absolutely happens. Off. Over six kilometers per second of velocity now, nah, coming up on 500 kilometers altitude. It should be okay. I mean, once again, you're we're looking for about 7,600 meters a second. Less than Anywhere a above 7,600 second be good. engine cutoff. Yeah, we can't. Anytime we need and to. And shortly after SECO, second engine cutoff, Excuse we me. will have the uh, deployment of some of the payloads aboard today's mission of uh, Space Flight Astro 1. There is one payload that will remain attached to the upper stage and will begin its mission um, after SECO as well. And we're coming up on that second engine cutoff milestone next. I don't know, Justin, maybe. Okay. Seco. And there you have it, second engine cutoff, Seco confirmed. A little short. We'll be looking for the callouts for the payloads that are being deployed next. At least I think they are. Last time they did an orbital insertion like this, it was five. It was five twenty-five by seventy-six, seventy-six oh five, I think, or something like that. It was something above seventy-six hundred. But they said Thomas said on the cast that it was ninety-seven degrees inclined at five fifty, which means that uh, the satellites can maneuver. Hey, Wefro. Right there. Thanks to the subs, guys. Yeah, it's real close. She's real close. This telemetry also might not be 100% correct. That's right. But I didn't hear anybody clap either. I heard one person clap and went, oh. And we have clear hands on face right there. I don't see nobody celebrating. There you have the trajectory right down the middle for today's ascent, and we're standing by to hear a word of payload separation. That's always a good mark for if something's gone wrong, if someone's doing this, or doing the not like this, not like this, or, or this, or, uh, Discovery, go and go hands, on. hands to the face like this means something, but no, we don't see it, we don't see it, we don't see it. Yeah, if we get them out like this, that means something's something's bad, but I don't see it. I saw this guy do it once, but everything everything else looks okay, but the mission director up there is looking around like crazy and typing furiously, so I don't see any not like this spotted just yet. Entropy. 
But I don't see any smiling faces either. We're at T plus 11 minutes after liftoff. We've completed <laughs> he had an itch. the first and second stage portions of flight. Reaching our mission altitude of 525 kilometers. And are awaiting you get a Mohawk too. confirmation nah, that I'm the good. loads have been deployed. He just hands on face panic basket. Is there a Mohawk Picking equivalent a for of a beard? Pad in Kodiak, Alaska. Yeah. We're just 12 minutes ago. I don't. LV triple zero nine lifted off. No, I'm good. All right, we'll wait for the call on payload deploy, see what happened. Yeah, Ian, the telemetry was short, dude. They were below 7,600. That's not... And, like, I don't want to be a jerk. Like, it's... If the satellites have onboard propulsion, they can make up the difference. But they were below 76. They, and we didn't hear a call for NOI either. And they started clapping right at second stage engine cutoff, and then they all stopped immediately. Yeah, th thank you, Taradra. Yeah, I know. It's kind of our thing. Yeah, I grab that's true. T plus 13 minutes, we're still awaiting confirmation that the payloads have deployed successfully. All right. Ilya, Otherwise, she already launched. All other mission events were nominal during the LV 0009 flight this morning. Do they need specific, specifically 7600? 7600 is above orbital velocity. Yeah, that's, that's above orbital velocity. Anything a little bit lower is going to come back down awfully fast. Torpedo. 500 meters and closing awfully fast. Wait, what? <clears throat> Do I want to look at the stonks? chat we have to hodl we must hodl oh no ah. <laughs> hodl we need those max q hands no not diamond hands max q hands it's different i believe me too elvin me too <laughs> And thanks for standing by with us. We are still waiting confirmation that our uh, payload deployment has Please. been successful. Um, about six minutes ago, we completed the flight profile of <laughs> LV Come on, make it. <laughs> ending in a successful second engine yes, cutoff <laughs> at the mission altitude of 525 oh. kilometers. Rocket, please. Yeah, rocket guy. Rocket guy being real. I like it. Yeah, it went up. It, it, yeah, that's right. It went up before this. 
Well, Druid, we're waiting on payload deployed. The launch looked great. Second stage looked good. I noticed some things with the second stage, but they called second stage engine cut off, and we haven't seen a picture of the upper stage since. I'm also sitting in mission control. Moon two typers. Here, get, let me type it, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on, let me type it. Save the rocket? It's a good rocket, Swishio. I like it. Furious typing sounds. Furious. Looking again there at our trajectory for today's flight. A nominal That's first right. stage and second stage flight. Lord, of yeah, Astros you're right. LV I'm telling you, doesn't matter the company, doesn't matter the rocket. If you see people doing this in mission control or this hey, in folks, mission thanks control, for staying patient. We're just waiting for some that means final something's gone wrong. I haven't seen any assembly. of that yet. I want to make sure that is confirmed before we report anything. So just standing by. But I want to be very clear that this and this is different than this. All right. The the thinking the thinker. If they're doing the thinker, that means something isn't exactly right. But it's fixable. Okay. If we see the thinker or this, huh, why did it do that? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, if they're doing the thinker, yeah, the thinking emoji, that's right, Advolve. If they're doing the thinker, that means something is fixable. But something did, didn't do exactly as planned. I wonder if sloshing caused the rotation after Seacomb. I don't know, Calpar, but yeah. I mean, Rocket Guy, do you think it was sloshing? It looked like it was sloshing a little bit, but I, I, I don't know. I said it could be that. I, I don't know. If you see this, that means, that means something's gone very wrong. <laughs> what emote is that? Hmm... Hmm. <laughs> Sloshing means they need baffles. Yeah. Usually sloshing are an effect of the controlled dead bend. Okay. Just in case, could the satellite operate even if it didn't separate? Eh, not really, Swishio. That's like saying, could I operate my car if it was still on a trailer being towed? Not really. No. <laughs> it's not really how that works, man. Stock's zooming up. Is it going up? Nope. Nope. Come on, guys. No, Fulboid, we're waiting on payload deploy. It looks like there is a little shaky on the way up, but it, it looks like it's there. Oh, 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 hold on. They keyed the mics. Come on. We can do a quick hot fire. And thank you so much for joining us for this morning's LV0009 uh, launch broadcast. We're at T plus about 20 minutes from the, the launch. Um, about 10 minutes ago, LV0009 successfully made it to orbit after a nominal first stage and second stage flight. We have not yet received um, any information about the uh, the payloads being successfully deployed. The vehicle was was far downrange of our uh, telemetry dish, which is as expected. And so it may be a little while before we have an update on that. Is it good enough, And Blue? we will provide that update on Twitter as soon as we have it. But for now, we're going to uh, wrap up today's broadcast after a successful ride to orbit for Astro's LV0009. Yeah, just stay tuned for that final confirmation step. That'll be all over Astro's social media channels as well as by NASA Spaceflight. But thank you so much for tuning to our live launch coverage for a picture-perfect launch of the rocket. Carolina, thank you so much for joining me for today's launch. It was a pleasure. Thank you as always, Thomas. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you to Astro for once again partnering with NASA Spaceflight for, for, today, for today's launch coverage. Stay tuned for future launch coverage and other Spaceflight news coverage here on NASA Spaceflight. And until the next time, this is Thomas Burkhart, News Director for NASA Spaceflight, signing off. We'll see you next time.
How long is a 525 polar orbit? 90 minutes. Um, Ian, they, 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 they said they would show payload deploy, man. They're like, yep, and we'll get to our payload deploy. Uh, they didn't say anything about cutting the cast before that, dude. So let's just, let's just pray to Jeb here for a second. Ready? Ready? Orbiter, external tank, SRB, SRB. All right? We, we, we pray to Jeb. And maybe, maybe make a sacrifice to the Kraken as well. What the hell? Nah, you liked it. Don't lie. <laughs> Did you see that another evergreen ship got stuck? Who is writing the story for 2022? Because, man, it's getting a little ridiculous. All right. You know that point when you're watching a movie? Discovery. Go the point when you're watching a movie and you're like, I believe this up until now, but yeah, okay, no. Uh, I don't, I don't mind that doom. Yeah, Hunter S. Thompson is right in this story. <laughs> I'd believe that. <laughs> yeah, I'd believe that. Anyway, that's the Aster coverage, man. Hopefully we get, hopefully we get a good indicator of payload deploy. But yeah, Novus, uh, I was gonna show that. Uh, it all went wrong after Harambe. Hey guys, hey guys, you wanna see something cool? Look, ready? It launched, Miff, but no confirmation on payload deployed just yet. What the heck is VSR3? Nah, see, I like that. Check that out, dudes. Oh, oh, that's, that's good. That's good. Also here, check this out. They rolled her in. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close, man. Oh, we're getting close. Oh, that's, that's dope. They, we just watched it here, Steiner. They just shut it off. I totally just noticed the tailpipe on the crawler. It's a, yeah, it's got a Bozuzuku exhaust, man. See? See? Look, the Bozuzuku exhaust. Yeah. Nani? Multi crawler drifto. Oh, oh. Novus, I'll tell you, the payout. The payout, dude. So worth it. So worth it, man. It's so freaking worth it. Oh, all that, all that time, all that effort. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't even work on this thing. It's so worth it, man. Seeing that thing roll out, it's gonna be amazing. Not straight piped. It is straight piped. I mean, it's a diesel. A diesel that big is. I'm pretty sure emissions exempt. See last for another view of the crawler, including seeing the hydraulics in action. The hydraulics. Welcome to hydraulic. Fresh channel. Yeah, check this out. Look at the crawlers on bags, boy. Look at this thing. See that? Oh, that's yep, yep. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, Metroid, it's going to happen. Stock's going up a little bit. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Imagine it not fitting. Ugh. Ugh. So is that two crawlers stuck front to back? No. No, it's just, this is just one. It's one piece of equipment. One big thing.
the ever forward is now ever stuck. Well, no, no, Len Prod, you're looking at the see the ever forward. You guys are looking at the wrong. You guys are looking at it the wrong way. It kept going forward. The problem is there was there was shore in the way. It, so ever forward is technically correct. Okay. When's rollout approximately? It's on Thursday, the seventeenth. So two days, mob. Oh, I thought the crawler was the bit with the tracks under the lift points. No, 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 no. The crawler is... Actually, it's derived from mining equipment. I'll show you. The crawler is like the size of a baseball field, man. Or, I don't know, a hockey rink, maybe? Something like that? She's big. Here. This is the best picture of one right here. Like in, that whole thing is the crawler transporter. It's the closest thing we have to a Jawa sand crawler. Also, even though it's the crappy one, bird. This whole thing is the crawler transporter. It's got two, uh, two Alco, two Alco 245D diesel engines in it. They're V16s, two of them. There's one to power the front tracks, and there's one to power the back tracks. But I, I'm pretty sure that's just double redundancy. I'm pretty sure one could power all of them. Um, so cute. Tuning, this thing is amazing. That thing is so cool. It's got. It's basically two diesel locomotives. Like, it's two diesel locomotives right next to each other. Ew, Triton. Yeah, yeah, Triton. I'll take my pushrod engine. Thank you very much. How many of these are still running? NASA has two of them, Jax? Uh, or not Jax. Uh, oh, yeah, there's the CT documentary. Yep. Uh, NASA has two of these. Crawler Transporter 2 is the one that's used, going to be used to pull it out, pull, pull the thing out from the high bay. Uh, NASA has CT1. The thing is... Uh, oh. The thing is, is that, all right, so a little bit of a story behind the crawler transporters and then we'll get to playing a game. Um, so NASA had two, has two CTs. They have CT1 and CT2. I know, very, very apt names. Um, NASA slang term form is Hans and Franz because they're going to pump you up. Seriously, that's what they call them. Um, so CT1 and CT2 are the ones that they use. Now, CT1 was basically used throughout the shuttle program. Right, and CT2 was used throughout the shuttle program. They took CT2 in the mid 2000s, and they they started taking it apart to restore it. Part of that budget was the Constellation program. Constellation, I mean, once again, everyone, oh, the price. Well, th this is why the price is high because you need to you need to restore it. So they basically took the thing entirely apart and put it back together, restored all the components, everything, uh, and they had it finished in basically 2013, 2014, CT2 was good to go. Um, CT1 was supposed to be restored after CT2 got operational for Ares 1 in the mid-2015s, or the 2015s, mid-20-teens. And because Constellation got canceled, they only restored one. So NASA has like a brand new crawler transporter and then an original like 53-year-old crawler transporter. CT1 is still NASA's, they still have it. They didn't scrap it or anything and frankly, they never should. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're using CT2 right now. Wasn't there a CT3? No, only two of them. There was three mobile launchers originally made. Oh, busted hotness. Yeah, they're, they're cool. I mean, the crawler transporters are... So you saw that the thing has adjustable ride height. It's the crawler transporter is a giant SPMT. It's not really modular. It's just a self-propelled transporter. It's a giant transporter. And just like an SPMT can get underneath stuff and lift stuff up, just like it does for Starship, that thing does that too. You'd see the hydraulics are right there. However, however, these hydraulics are on a gimbal. Not a lot of people know that. Because think about it, the crawler transporter has to drive up the hill. It has to drive up the hill to put the rocket on the pad.
You have to drive up the hill to get the crawler transporter on there. So, see the hill right there? And then you see the crawler with the, with the ML. It'll look like this in another couple of days, but there'll be a rocket right here. Um, also note the cars for size, which is just uh, unbelievable. It's ridiculously big. Um, this thing can actually jack the back of the thing up and it levels as it goes up the hill. It, it's pretty insane. Can the crawler do a spot turn? N no, it has a turning radius. The turning radius is part of the reason why the rocks are there, why they decided to put the, the make the crawler way out of rocks, Sebi. Uh, because when you're turning, you this thing would just roast cement when it tried to turn or, or an asphalt or whatever. Yeah, Swishio. Yep. Yeah. What's the fuel efficiency on this thing? Uh, it's like 0.2 miles per gallon, T-Man. But energy is energy, dude. It doesn't get good fuel economy, but I mean, not there's not a lot of things that get good fuel economy and can move 8 million pounds of rocket and launch pad. You guys got to remember, you see this thing right here? This thing. This tall tower right there with the the pyramidal structure at the bottom and the whole, this whole thing, that's the launch pad. That's not, that's not like, oh, that's just another piece that they need. No, that, the, the, this thing, the mobile launcher and the launch umbilical tower is the launch pad. They just roll it here, set it down on stilts, hook up the water and hook up the fuel lines, uh, HVAC and electrical. And that's it. That is the entire launch that the thing, it moves the entire launch pad three miles down the road, which is. Like I said, that's insane. The crawler family is meant to transport heavy mining equipment. Here's a crawler family member in its natural habitat. Yep, there you go. Thanks, rocket guy. Yep. Yep, that's what that's what the CT is made out of. It's that's its that's its cousin. It's not the CT. It's the CT's mining cousin. Did I miss the Astro launch? Yep. So they're telling me they just could have made a better way? No, Swishio. That, that is probably the best way to do it. I mean, Swish, look at the terrain, dude. This part of Florida is like Venice. Seriously, it's like Venice. You're not, it's very, very squishy and muddy. Uh, that looks like solid ground. That ain't solid ground. You step in it, you'll sink about three feet into the mud. Uh, that part of Florida is just like, it's the same idea. Yeah, so now think about moving eight, uh, what's eight million pounds? Um, 4,000, 4, 4, 4,000 tons? Pretty much, yeah, four thousand tons of launch pad and rocket over that type of terrain. The the tr the tracks were the best way to do it. Hello, did it launch? It launched, yeah. CT two is Hans. I think CT two is Franz because Hans is Hans and Franz. Yeah, we're going to pump you up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Okay, give this up. It's only rocket science. Florida equals not fit for habitation. Got it. Yeah, it is. Just that part right near the ocean is not ideal. But yeah, you're trying to move something that heavy, you're going to need... That's really the only good way to do it. They looked at using train tracks, and they looked at using, you know, just rolling it around on concrete or whatever. It, it's just not going to... There's no other good way to do it. And they didn't want the launch pad... They didn't want the integration building at the launch pad. Because if you had your integ integration building inside the blast detonation area, if something went wrong, you lose your integration building, your pad, and your and your launcher. That's why they built it so far away. Hey, Ian. 12-month resub. Yeah, there you go, Toasted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, a little bit on the crawler transforces. We can dive into those more. Um, we can dive into those more during space news. Let's, uh, 
play Vidya. What do we want to play? I'm sorry, just the, my Twitter feed is peppered with this. And I just want to keep watching it. Yeah, tuning, that already happened. More railroads? You want to play more railroads online? We can do that. Keep in mind, though, this footage is sped up, by the way. Let's play Trains Tuesday and then Tuesday Tarkov with Taradra. Leaving behind in its path powder. Yeah, it's enough to squish a rock, which is... Yeah, rock guy, that's... That's crazy to me, dude. I was gifted these by a, a NASA employee. <laughs> yeah, see? See how one side of the rock is completely flat and every other side is not flat? Yeah, that's where one of those things squished this. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. It's only 8 million pounds. Squished as in deformed. Yeah, it turns out this thing. Ah, yes, the pet rock. Does it have a name? No. Yes, maybe? Are you aware of the Road to Mars Boca Chica Sim software? No, Adam. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Did you see this? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. So you're saying not to put my foot under that. I, I, yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Like, it didn't break the rock, it squished it. Yeah, yeah, Rogue, similar to like if you took Silly Putty and went, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, Krilani, I'm, I'm gonna say that anything that you put underneath this, foot, car, truck anything that gets that this thing goes over is you're gonna lose but a rock isn't silly putty that's yeah we're talking a lot of force here huh you gotta remember these 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 river rocks here are quartz quartz is very porous it's designed to be it's designed to crush it's designed to do that on purpose um on porous i should say that was the idea, Rogue. So that's that's the whole point. They want to crush the rock. You don't want to put something that's going to resist it. The rock getting crushed works like a crush core on a Falcon 9. It's the same idea. The rocks are very easy to replace. There's plenty of rocks around. They're all over the place. The rocks are easy to, re to replace, They and they crush. And when they crush, that, that absorbs the force. That's They're supposed to do that. That was the idea. That's right, Metroid. Yep. You got a whole planet made out of them. Yeah, no, I don't know about this one, Ozzy. Maybe. Wait, do you think NASA would let us put a car in the way? No. I can't crush another crawler transporter. Nice. So this was a very inexpensive solution that actually worked very well. That's right, Kev. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the surface like under the mobile launcher in the VAB? It's concrete. But dread, it's concrete that it's concrete that goes down a long way. The pilings for the VAB go down to bedrock in Florida. It's a long way down. It's a long way down. Yeah, very long way down. Uh, I'd I'd have to go look at the core samples or something to figure out where it is, but it's down there. Hey, Bio, I'm doing fine. Um, all right, I guess we'll play some railroads. I'll keep an eye on what's going on with Astra here. I hope everything went okay. I 
I want to get to the point 